this is my second disclaimer video. Last one was on radio frequencies and stuff. And yeah, I do my obviously I do my uh, my disclaimers after my videos go out, uh, just because I just kind of assume stuff, I guess. Anyway, uh, I've done a number of videos where I've gone out to kiosks that I found, whether they're touch screens or have buttons, and shown you how to get to menus and other stuff. And there have been people concerned, oh, you're going to get in trouble for doing this. And, oh, you know, I could. You can get in trouble for walking across the street the wrong way, too. Uh, my videos show that I'm not doing anything malicious. Uh, I'll give you an example. There was the one with the gas pump where I found that if you hit two buttons, it brings up a menu, and I clicked on one of the menu buttons, and it asked for access code. Now, if I sat there and tried a bunch of different access codes, yeah, now I'm trying to brute force the thing. I'm trying to break the machine. But besides that, I'm just using functionality of the machine. I, I hit two buttons, and, and, you know, I'm not a lawyer again. And, yeah, I, pff, I guess... I could be pulled into court for hidden two buttons. I don't think that I will. Um, for years, I have gone out, and any time I walk up to a kiosk or touch screen, I hit the screen, touch different ways, and, and I would say uh, it's becoming less and less back in the day. Almost every single time I would find a, a hidden menu. Nowadays, it's becoming better and better. Maybe a third of the time I'm able to find menus within 30 seconds of just boop, 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 pop and stuff. Another example was the Chuck E. Cheese one where I hit the screen and right away I could see the keyboard in the corner of the screen. All I did was pull it out and hit a couple of keys on it. Uh, again, uh, in that case, I'm just using functionality. If you don't want me using that keyboard, don't put it on the screen. Well, you know, will that hold up in court? I think that the, the personally, I think uh, the programmers, the people who set up that kiosk should be brought into court for creating something like that where people are again putting in your credit cards into that machine and you're giving them full access to a Windows machine, Windows desktop with keyboard instead of just your locked in uh, you know, kiosk interface. They're the ones that should be brought to court. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and do something that you think is illegal and if you do go out and do something and you get in trouble, it's not my fault. Don't do it if you're going to get in trouble. But if you're going up to a machine and you're typing in any type of personal information or sticking in your credit card, you should be aware of what that machine is doing. And if there is a hidden menu that shouldn't be there because it's poor design, you should know about that before you stick your credit card in there. So you should have the right to hit two buttons on a gas, uh, gas pump and see if a menu comes up. There should be nothing wrong with that. And you know what? If everybody did it, then you know what? <laughs> they would stop putting those buttons in there. Now, another topic, someone, I'm assuming, jokingly said, I'm going to sit there and, uh, and try to brute force this thing. Another person said, I should build a robot that's going to try to brute force this. You know, obviously, you're not going to sit at a gas pump uh, and sit there and try uh, all these different digits. Uh, I didn't try typing a number. I don't know how many digits the, the kiosk allows on the gas pump. Um, because it might, it might uh, allow you to type in as many digits as you want or limit you to a certain amount. I don't know. Uh, but my initial thought is it's either going to be a four or probably a six digit pin at most. It's obviously numeric because it's a numeric keypad. I'm going to guess a four digit pin. So this is, this is just going off from disclaimer two to just pointing out something. If, there, if, if it's a four digit pin and it's numeric only, that means that there's 10,000 possible combinations. N Knowing this, how hard would it be for someone to get together across the country, online, find a thousand different people with these gas pumps near them, assign each of them 10, dig 10 codes to try, and in no time, the code would be broken. That's why you shouldn't have menus like this, even with an access code without accessible. Uh, bringing up another thing, years ago, I, I think they've changed uh, the red box. I think it was red box where you get the movies. I've never actually rented a movie from them. Uh, but I do know that years ago, I found, again, it's a, a touch screen, so I just walked up to the machine, started touching the corners, and I found that uh, at the main screen, I think if you top the, touch the top right corner three times, or maybe it was left and right a couple times, something like that, I did figure out, all of a sudden, a menu would come up. Well, not a menu, a little animation ask you to cert, insert a maintenance disk. Uh, so that's better than, than an access code. So basically, I guess to get into maintenance mode on that, you press that key, bring that screen up, and I guess they had a special CD that they would stick in, just like you're returning a disk, they would put in a disk that I guess would activate. I, I'm assuming that's what that meant. That's at least a little bit better, because I can't just sit there and guess stuff. You need an actual CD that, uh, or DVD that probably has information on it, and without that exact information, it's not going to bring you into maintenance mode. So that's a little bit better. Um, I know back in the day, again, I'm talking over 10 years ago, uh, when I would go to Target, when I was getting married, signing up for their gift registry, 
touch their screen, I heard clicking when I would top, touch the corners. Nowhere else in the screen, main menu, I touched the top corners, clicking. So I just sat there, I went, clack, 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 clack. And it was something like left, right, right, left, or something like that would bring up their, their maintenance menu. And some of those, some options in there needed passwords. Other ones didn't. I could test the printer or set, shut the machine down uh, without a password. So again, no need for that. Uh, since then, I think they've switched to iPads and I haven't gone over there and played with them. I'm hoping they're a little more locked down. iPads tend to be pretty locked down. Uh, I'm not saying that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> but uh, you now we're talking about the difference between securing a machine and locking down a machine are two different things. Anyway, just a thought. Uh, again, I'm not a lawyer, don't get yourself in trouble, but if you're interacting with these machines, if it's just a kiosk that, uh, that's displaying pictures, or for example, uh, there was the one time I did a video a couple of years ago, I was at the mall and there was a huge touch screen uh, doing a slideshow of realty, uh, real estate or something like that. I went over and I was touching it, trying to find a hit button. My daughter came over and touched the screen at the same time I did and it crashed the program and they were running Ubuntu. Again, it doesn't matter whether you're running Windows or Linux, there's no reason for a full desktop to be running on that machine. Just open up your application, you know, start Xorg if you're running Linux, uh, maybe with a very basic window manager, but no need for a desktop interface. The only thing it should be running is your, your kiosk and the graphical display interface like Xorg. Um, so even in that case, you're running Linux, I shouldn't have, and I was able to open up a web browser that connected to the internet. At least in that case, no one was entering information, but their machine was still exposed. You know, as the user, I don't care because I'm not putting my credit card or prior information into there. But other cases, you do. You're putting your credit card in there. You need to. You need to know what's going on with these machines. So, so don't be afraid to protect yourself. And the way you protect yourself is by knowledge. And don't be afraid on your personal machine or other machines. If you're using a machine, you're the user of that machine. You should be able to. Whatever you're able to do, you should be allowed to do. If you're able to do something you're not supposed to do, that is the administrator of that machine's fault, in my opinion. That's not a legal stance. Uh, so go ahead, protect yourself. Please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. It's a link in the description. Uh, if you enjoy my videos, be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. And I thank you. And I hope that you have a great day.